Unit 1, Part 1, Unlocking the Situation. The expected result of this unit is that you feel longer on your working side. With sacroiliac joint dysfunction, one side is jammed with different symptoms on each side. Don't take symptoms as your indicator of which side is jammed. Do the manual self-examination with each practice session to determine which is your jammed deeper side. Which side is jammed is likely to change as you go through the regimen. You do unit one from the recorded instruction until you've memorized it. Thereafter, you do it from memory with each practice session of any instruction from unit two. You'll know how many repetitions to do by feel once you've learned the feeling of the change produced by the unit one exercises. Thereafter, you may do fewer repetitions, enough to feel the changes that you're now familiar with. The major changes of pelvic shape and sacral position occur in the exercises in Unit 2. Unit 1 is preparation. Your first step of preparation is to learn Unit 1 so that you need not rely upon the tutorial and can do fewer repetitions when you start doing Unit 2. Unit 1, Part 1, consists of the self-assessment, gentle spine waves, and the sideline sacral self-decompression. Unit 1, Part 2, consists of the standing side sway, the exercise to free hamstrings, and the two walks, the gyroscopic walk and the old Scottish geezer's walk. In the week when you're learning Unit 1, you do only Unit 1, Part 1, and Part 2, one after the other. After that, you do Unit 1, Part 1, a section from Unit 2, and then Unit 1, Part 2. To restate, you start, as shown in the diagram at top, with Unit 1, Part 1. Then follow with the section of Unit 2 with which you are presently working, and then finish as shown in the diagram at bottom with Unit 1, Part 2. Let's cover some basic practice issues. Some of the exercises are fairly intricate and you may find yourself in doubt that you're doing them correctly. After you've practiced a bit, you'll be able to recognize the feel of the exercises and the integrity of the sequence of movement elements. However, in the beginning, you're unlikely to do the exercises in good form. Achieving good form occurs by a series of increasingly accurate approximations of the movements described in the instruction. With each practice session, you'll be doing the exercises closer and closer to the ideal form each time. Now, if you become direly concerned that you're not doing the exercises correctly, you may contact me and set up a coaching relationship with me in which I guide you through the exercises so that you know what good form feels like. Coaching contact information appears at the end of every section of practice. Next topic, cramping. The typical reaction people have to a cramp is to try to stretch the cramp out. I think this comes from the teaching about stretching and it's incorrect. If you want to clear up a cramp, what you do is get into movement. So, for example, if you have a cramp in your foot with a straight leg, you wave the foot up and down or side to side in order to dispel the cramp. It works far better than trying to stretch the cramp out. If you have a cramp in your hamstring, then with a straight leg, you roll the leg side to side with the toes 
lifted toward the knee gently. These are just examples of how to dispel a cramp through movement. On soreness, the soft tissue around your sacroiliac joints is in a state of irritation from being stretched and out of place for so long. As you go through practice, you may experience soreness in two ways. One is soreness immediately after the practice session and lasting for a couple of hours, after which you feel better than before, or possibly the day after practice, lasting for 24 to 36 hours, and self-resolving. Don't assume you've done something wrong if you got sore. It's an occasional after effect of practice. Gentle spine waves brings the tension of your low back under control and connects that region functionally, that is through movement, with the front hip joint flexors. Your back feels flatter on the surface and more relaxed. The sideline sacral self decompression decompresses the sacroiliac joint on the jammed side, loosens it so that the pelvis is more free to reshape. The key to the sideline sacral self decompression is to keep your balance. You keep your balance by adjusting the amount of forward or backward motion of your active arm and leg that is on the top side. If you find yourself bracing to keep yourself from rolling forward or backward, you're not balanced. Balance is free floating. You can't relax when you feel off balance because you feel awkward. So find and cultivate balance in the movements.